From Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American original. For over three decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. Why are you still sleeping? I just wanted to check and make sure that we were on schedule. The first technology of its kind. Mom and Dad, I have great news. Is now providing answers families need. Siemens Answers. Issue one, Latino power. I've met these young people all across the country. They're studying in our schools, they're playing with our children, pledging allegiance to our flag, hoping to serve our country. They are Americans in their hearts, in their minds. They are Americans through and through in every single way but on paper. And all they want is to go to college and give back to the country they love. So lifting the shadow of deportation and giving them a reason to hope, that was the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do. The reception given to President Obama on Friday by NALIO, the National Association of Latino Elected and Appointed Officials, was decidedly warm. NALIO's annual conference came only one week after the President's executive order to stop the deportation from the United States of young illegal immigrants of all nationalities now living here, provided certain criteria are met. This executive order affects the status of some 800,000 of the 11 million aliens in the U.S. It grants temporary legal status, two years, to those who come forward and register for a work permit with these additional criteria. One, be under 30. Two, arrive in the U.S. before age 16. Three, live in the U.S. for at least five consecutive years. Four, be a high school graduate or in school or have military service. Five, no criminal record. Question, how strongly will this move by President Obama granting temporary legal status, not citizenship, to young Latinos, how will it resonate with Latino voters? James Pethokoukas. <laughs> well, so far it seems to be resonating pretty well, but I think the Obama White House is going to be shocked at how little staying power this ultimately has. And I think uh, by Election Day, which and this is what this was about, this was about Election Day uh, November, that, that, uh, that what's going to really uh, influence voters is the fact that the unemployment rate among Latino Americans is officially 11 percent. It's actually closer to 13 percent. You have about 25 million households with their, ho their homes underwater. I think those are the facts that are going to end up resonating uh, come November. Hello. I think this was a master stroke on the part of the president because he puts Romney in a box. Uh, Mitt Romney can't be for this and he can't be against it. And at the same time, the president uh, both augments and cements his base in the Hispanic community. Uh, granted, uh, unemployment is a big issue, not only with Hispanics everywhere, but there are certain issues that really affect their community. And I think the president really hit the sweet spot on this one. Susan. I would say it was less a master stroke and more a real indication of how worried Obama is about his reelection prospects because he has lost really the white blue collar vote that he really desperately needs and so he needs to pick up somewhere else. He needs to go look at his base and figure out where he can drum up more support. But Hispanic voters, while they're increasing at least by two million this year, it's predicted, it's still less than nine percent of the vote. So he really needs to drum up more support from the rest of his base if it's going to have a big impact. And I think, again, this is a sign that he's just worried, really desperately worried about his reelection prospects. Is the two million a voting population or a population? Well, it, right now there's about, there's fewer than 22 million voters who are Hispanic who are expected to vote in the 2012 election. Since that's going to be about less, well, less than 9% of the overall vote. So he still has to make up for that somewhere. Paul. It did two things. First of all, it shored up his greatest weakness with Latinos, which was enthusiasm. Um, he's going to get a huge share of the Latino vote. The question is, will they come to the polls? He's now given them 
them something to come to the polls for. And he's going to use it all through the campaign. Two, as Eleanor said, it was a strategic masterstroke. This was the one area where Romney might have had a shot at coming back. Uh, 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 Senator Rubio had a plan to do almost exactly the same thing. Obama got there first. Um, that eliminates what uh, uh, Romney might have offered that he could have given uh, the positions he took, the harsh uh, positions against illegal immigration that he took uh, during the during the Okay. Process. Who is being deported or will be? Deportation of illegal immigrants has been on the rise since the year 2001 when 120,000 people were deported. Last year's deportation number was a record setter, 396,000 deported. The president one week ago described who was being deported. We focused and used discretion about whom to prosecute, focusing on criminals who endanger our communities rather than students who are earning their education. And today, deportation of criminals is up 80%. Question, 400,000 deportations of future would-be citizens in one year sent back to go where they came from. How does this echo the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor at the entrance to the harbor? How, do, how does she feel about it? Quote, give me your tired. You're poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Paul, do you have thoughts on that? Well, it, it doesn't say, give me your carjackers, give me your murderers, right? These are criminals that he's getting rid of. The problem is, of that 400,000, only a small percentage are serious hardened criminals. A lot of them are people with nothing more than immigration violations. And that is a problem for the president. And a big reason why he did this other thing on, on, uh, on deportations was because he has stirred up a lot of resentment within the Hispanic community because of this huge increase in deportations. That's right. Facts aside, Paul, stay with us, facts aside, what do you think the zeitgeist is in America today, generally speaking, towards immigrant, immigrants? I think it's been what it's always been. And I, I've, I've done a lot of polling, read a lot of polls, talked to a lot of people. I think people are okay with immigrants who stay within the law, who want to be Americans, and they're furious at the idea do that immigrants want, are criminals. Do they, do they want standards? Like if you're they a physician, standards. yes. If you've got a PhD, yes. But below that, uh, hang around. They, they, they don't want people, they want people to behave by the rules, and they feel taken advantage of when immigrants come here and break and the, the law. the president well, really cracked down on a lot of the, of, uh, the illegal immigration because he thought that was going to be a prelude to passing immigration reform. Secure the borders, crack down, then he'll get a bill. The bill never came. And Paul is right, he was really struggling in the Hispanic community. They did feel uh, betrayed. But the... the Immigration in this country to Mexico has now slowed to a, st a standstill. So this is a, a good time to address these issues. And there's no resentment against these young people who were brought here. Every local newspaper has done a feature on some wonderful young person who's the valedictorian and is facing a deportation order. So the president did the right thing here. We're, we keep talking about the politics of it, but from a humane standpoint, I think he did you know, what America is supposed but, to stand for. But what are the president's priorities? I think most people, if you did, you know, this, you know, what, you know what's the most important problems facing America? Uh, immigration would probably not be number one or number two. What would be number one or number two? Well, it would be the economy. It would be job creation. And the president has decided to focus recently on lots of things that really have absolutely nothing to do with those. Uh, he's focused on, you know, earlier he had this, you know, tax increase on wealthy Americans, the Buffett rule. Then he had same-sex marriage. And now he has this. What he could have done is come out and say, you know what, uh, we have 8% unemployment. It's the highest sustained rate of unemployment since the Great Depression. You know what we could use in this country? A lot more high-skill, entrepreneurial immigrants that come in here, create jobs, mm -hmm. create the companies. That's not what he focused on because well, he figured yeah. he'd get the political bang for the buck for that. Well, immigration does correlate to uh, work and jobs, and therefore it is still sensitive. That's because immigrants come in and they take jobs. Of Americans, right. I'm putting this all in right. quotes. Right. 
You and, a, and Alabama well, has been so really think, hurting because right, they put mm -hmm. in this restrictive... Do you, do you think that this country me, lacks please. more low-skill immigration? I want to finish by thought. Low right. Alabama put in a restrictive uh, immigration law, and a lot of legal immigrants have left the state, along with illegals, and the crops are rotting in the fields, businesses are canceling contracts. It's, it's, not, it's not good for the economy mm -hmm. to have this kind of attitude. Susan. Okay, so you can... That, that's a valid point you're making, Eleanor, but... Anyone can argue if President Obama felt like this was such an important priority for him, why didn't he take it up legislatively when Congress was run by he Democrats did. and when the House had a, pre well, had a Democratic president? He did. Well, the House, he he did. He the he House passed the, 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 the DREAM Act, which this was a modest version of, and, and the through. Senate got 55 but votes but for they, it. But they couldn't get it through. So no, they, but they, they couldn't get the Republicans filibustered it. I mean, you know, Republicans can't say, we filibustered it and it's your fault. Right. But they had they had control of uh, both branches. Well, they obviously did. They couldn't do it. They so whose fault could, is it? They couldn't get the 60. That, that, the Dream, that the Dream Act didn't pass, it was Republicans' fault. I mean, they, they're, they're the ones they that voted against it. There were Democrats who voted with Republicans. Well, okay. Yeah. Romney at Nalio. The Republican candidate also addressed the Nalio conference this week, where we spoke to, uh, to the Obama immigration action. Some people have asked if I will let stand the president's executive order. The answer is that I will put in place my own long-term solution that will replace and supersede the president's temporary measure. As president, I won't settle for stopgap measures. I'll work with Republicans and Democrats to build a long-term solution. And I'll prioritize measures <laughs> and I want you to also know this, I, I will prioritize efforts that strengthen legal immigration and make it more transparent and easier. And I'm going to address the problem of illegal immigration in a civil and resolute manner. We may not always agree, but when I make a promise to you, I will keep it. What's now? Uh, okay, National Association of, elected, of Latino Elected and Appointed Officials. The point he's making is this. And, and I, think, I think actually Romney needs to make this point a little more clearly, which is that, okay, uh, what Obama did right now is potentially unconstitutional. He re really circumvented the Congress mm -hmm. and said, I'm going to just uh, do the DREAM Act without your help. I think what, uh, what Romney's trying to say is, I'll do a uh, comprehensive reform, we'll work it through Congress legally, and then get it signed into law comprehensively. And that's a better solution, because then we can enforce the borders a little bit better. Like, he wants to build a fence, so I guess that's his way of trying to keep uh, illegal immigrants out. He wants to address the whole problem of illegals getting into the country while dealing with the people who are already here. That's comprehensive. Well, well, yeah, that's, well who that's said that's it was all unconstitutional? Nicely said. That's all nicely well, said. That's Professor Obama, I believe, who said it was <laughs> unconstitutional. It's not. <laughs> the old instructor uh, did, right? It's not unconstitutional. It's prosecutorial yeah. discretion. You have limited resources. You decide who I you're going to go, go after Obama and who said. you're That's going I, he's and who you're expert. going to <laughs> deport. And it makes no sense to deport young people who are succeeding and who are, in all respects, feel that they're Americans. So this is the appropriate thing to do. And <laughs> Romney did not answer the question whether yeah, he would that, overturn right. uh, this. Th that was a weird thing. He yeah. asked himself, <laughs> he said he what, was is, what, what is the answer to yeah. the question? Said, well, then he said, I'm not going to tell you the answer. answer. <laughs> it was a weird wow, answer. The question is moot. Well, really he said. Yeah. Well, he said, he said, will I uphold the president's policy? He said, he I, will I will have a new policy. Yeah. Right. Right. That doesn't answer the right. question. Because, because he has no, he's going to make question. no attempt to rescind the policy. He's going to build on it. But he didn't say that. I know he didn't. And for a Why lot of Latino he, families, he's if we're talking about place. Latinos, right? He doesn't want for to a lot of Latino families, That's congratulatory. Well, of course not. But for a lot of Latino families, they don't know if the president's promise will be kept by the next administration. So they're going to go to an a immigration office and say, yes, uh, I'm here illegally. Uh, but the president promised that I could have a reprieve, but if, uh, unless they know that that's going to be continued, they're going to be afraid to do that. So Romney not giving them a straight answer did not do himself any favor. I don't think he can sort of say that there was a crooked answer on Romney's part. He wants a program right. that's going to be endure. Yeah. It was more something of that. saying yes or no, he gave a far more expansive <laughs> answer yes, to the question. Yeah. Well, except he didn't answer he, the question. He may he be able to build on what Romney with <laughs> he's, he's, if 
if he's elected president, he will be, lead, be leading a party that is largely anti-immigration. How I think he's they're anti-immigration. Oh, they're not anti-immigration. They're not anti-immigration. That's a talking point. They're largely anti-immigration. They're pro-immigration. That, that's just wrong. Excuse me. How is he going to put together this wonderful program that Ted Kennedy, John McCain, and George W. Bush couldn't put together? It is not as easy as he makes it sound. And the president has taken a small slice of a very deserving community and done the right thing. Right, and he learned in Massachusetts right. that he could not confront Ted Kennedy with this issue when he ran against him. I don't know that he uh, worked with Ted Kennedy on immigration when he was no, in he Massachusetts. No, he ran against him. Right, yeah. The Senate. Yeah, yeah. In Massachusetts. Romney. Right. Issue two contempt of Congress. 23 eyes, 17 no's. The eyes have it. And contempt. That's how the Republican-led House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform, chaired by Congressman Darrell Issa, this week ruled against Attorney General Eric Holder. A.G. Holder refuses to hand over documents related to the botched U.S. federal gun-running program dubbed Fast and Furious. Hours before the vote, the president inserted himself into the fracas citing presidential executive privilege over the documents that ISSA wants. Some 1,700 big guns were purchased in the U.S. by suspected Mexican gun smugglers as the U.S. federal agency, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, the ATF, looked on. The guns were moved across the border to Mexico. It was a setup, and the DOJ let it happen. The ATF hoped they could trace the weaponry to Mexico's big drug cartels. But the guns went awry, notably in the fatal shooting by a Mexican drug cartel gunman of a U.S. Border Patrol agent, Brian Terry, a year and a half ago. The documents Congressman Issa is demanding from Holder allegedly detail how the Obama administration misled Congress about Fast and Furious. To the White House, the documents contain privileged internal communications. So, it's a standoff between the executive branch and the legislative, one that Holder called a quote-unquote constitutional crisis. Republican House Speaker John Boehner in a statement said, quote, unless the Attorney General reevaluates his choice and supplies the promised documents, the House will vote to hold him in contempt this coming week, unquote. That means the full house. Question, is this a political witch hunt in an election year, as some Democrats claim? Or this slap, does this slap by House Republicans have merit? Susan. It does have merit, because what the Republicans want to know is what the Department of Justice knew about this botched gun running operation. And they've been asking for months and months from the Department of Justice to give them more information, because evidence keeps coming forward through whistleblowers and through leaks that they clearly knew more than they're saying they knew. And no one is being held accountable. Well, he, what's, what's, uh, what's the AG saying? He's turned over 70,000 boxes? He says he's turned over 7,600 documents. But the Republicans say a lot of it is stuff that they've already seen or it's heavily redacted. They're not getting the info that they say they ha rightfully are entitled to as an oversight committee in Congress. I and mean, Congress does have a right to oversee the government and its operations. And they feel like a huge mistake was made. There's been a loss of life, not just Agent Terry, but, but Mexicans killed by these thousands of weapons that are now in the hands of Mexicans that the, our agents never even bothered to track. They let tactic, them end up over there. This was there. a tactic of gun running across the border so you can build cases and supposedly get the big drug kingpins. Tactic started during the Bush administration. It was ended by Eric Holder when they realized what That's a disaster exactly it was. It wasn't really and it was turned. Excuse me. And it was turned tactic. over to the Inspector General of the Justice Department, who is investigating and has access to all the documents, including the ones that the White House and Justice Department do don't want to turn over to the the Congress. The the documents thereafter are internal deliberations mm -hmm. about how the administration is going to respond to the investigation. In other words, the spin they're going to put on it, which the uh, Congress is framing as a cover-up. They're dragging out all the Watergate uh, language, hoping to 
smear the, pre the president and the attorney general. And what they're in danger of mm -hmm. is overreaching, like whitewater and impeachment. And I don't believe that Speaker Boehner wanted this. He's being pulled along by his caucus. The right has been after Fast and Furious mm -hmm. for really the better part of a year. And uh, now it's out there and let the politics fall where they may. And I don't think the White House is upset that this is front and center, taking away from Mitt Romney and his jobs agenda. What happens if uh, the worst sends on the Democrats in this issue? What's the worst that can happen? That, that they, they were, th well, that they uh, lied to the Congress. Well, there was a there was a two, there was a uh, there was a 2011 letter, which uh, really gave a completely false picture of this program. And what Republicans want to know is exactly <laughs> who, know, who knew what, when about this letter, which gave a complete distorted picture of, of, of a program that was not begun <laughs> during the Bush administration, a, a, a completely different plan, which was much more closely monitored, that did not result in two or 300 Mexican citizens dead. That was a very different program. That's the question. Will a full House contempt of Congress vote be averted? Yes or no? James Pethokoukas. Uh, I don't think so. Oh. I don't think so either, but even if there is contempt, it would be referred to the U.S. attorney who so would that. probably sit on it like has been done with past uh, contempt charges. I'd say 90% the vote will go forward and he will be found in contempt of Congress. Be found what? In contempt of Congress. Holder will be found in contempt of Congress then this what week. Then, well, like Eleanor was saying, it's referred back to really the executive branch uh, holder's office, and, and it, it will not go anywhere in a criminal fashion, but it may go forward in a civil fashion oh. and it'll end up in yeah, the courts. Yeah, I, I think I agree. I think it'll probably go forward, and 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 I, the question is, what kind of political damage will there be? I think very little. It's something that the ISA can hold up after shooting a bunch of duds and not getting anything, and it feeds the base. It's good for Republicans, but I don't think it will have any real effect. Right. How many people have been held in contempt of Congress? Very, very, very few. few. Very In few. fact, a lot of times it'll go through committee, never make it uh, to the full house. Uh, the, the Democrats held two Obama administration officials in contempt of Congress in 2008, Harriet Myers and Josh Bolton. And the Democrats got the documents they wanted. Well, this believe. sounds like it's kind of a charade <laughs> yes, on all sides. Ex Is yes. it a charade? It's election year politics. Yeah, I think if you look under the dictionary under election year stunts, you'll find a picture of Daryl Issa. I mean, it, there's there's nothing there's not a lot here. And John there's Conyers, some there's some legitimate matter. questions. What leads you to believe that Issa or Issa? What makes you believe that he's capable of that? Isn't he an honorable man? Um, uh, well, I suppose he's the chair of a committee that has that has the capability of doing this <laughs> it's an election year gone after the opposite election party. Year, mm -hmm. right i mean this is what he does i mean he he and actually nancy pelosi last week a you know, number of people called daryl uh, isa a loose cannon she said that would be a compliment he's actually an explosive device <laughs> <laughs> was that complimentary but uh he, no you have to counter not, that with the fact that democrats are he's saying creating thing. a lot of damage <laughs> for Democrats, but also for Republicans. Issue three, Rubio tells all. Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio is often named as a possible vice presidential running mate for Mitt Romney. The senator is a Cuban American born in Miami and popular with Hispanics. Previous to the U.S. Senate, Mr. Rubio served in the Florida House of Representatives for eight years. So, Senator Rubio appeals to Floridian, the crucial swing state, which Mitt Romney must win if he is to become president of the U.S. Senator Rubio, age 41, could also help Romney pull the youth vote. Rubio wrote an autobiography published this week called An American Son. Here's Rubio on immigration from his autobiography, quote, Many people who come here illegally are doing exactly what we would do if we lived in a country where we couldn't feed our families. If my kids went to sleep hungry every night and my country didn't give me an opportunity to feed them, there isn't a law, no matter how restrictive, that would prevent me from coming here. Unquote. Question, what's the political impact of Rubio's strong words, Paul Glasper? Well, I think it, it strengthens uh, any 
future uh, immigration reform, you have obviously a senator who represents Hispanics uh, uh, standing up for illegal immigration, for the, human the humanity behind illegal immigration. I don't think it necessarily helps Marco Rubio become vice president or vice presidential candidate. Um, maybe it hurts his chances of becoming a vice presidential candidate. How? He's just... Uh, uh, Violating the law? W walked uh, across a, a hard line that... that a lot of Americans, not just conservative Americans, but very much the conservative base believes, which is uh, breaking the law is breaking the law, and whether or not uh, uh, you might have done it, uh, they don't deserve to stay. And and uh, so this is a this is a, a very difficult uh, issue for any Republican to 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 transgress, and he just transgressed it. Is he in the running, Elena? Uh, I don't think he is in the running for vice president. Why do you say that? Well, because uh, the Romney campaign is terrified of what you might call the Palin effect, of putting someone in that position who cannot be seen as a credible instant president. Uh, Rubio is 41 years old. In years, he's old enough. But when you see him and you listen to him, he doesn't come across as somebody who could command this country uh, should uh, that, be, that be the case. But he is nonetheless an asset for uh, Romney because he adds an important note of empathy and understanding of the immigration issue. And his, his position is that Romney has to do a lot to declare the Republican Party no. the party of legal immigration, that their anti-immigration rhetoric has led people to think they don't like immigration of any kind. And so I think I, uh, Rub Rub Rubio is, is an asset, and I'm sure we're going to see Marco more Rubio. of him on You're the You're going to see a lot trail. of Marco Rubio That's in the next right. few months. You'll see him at a, have a uh, big position at the Republican Convention. Uh, Susanna Martinez, the governor of New Mexico, you're going to see, you're gonna see a, a lot of her. You're almost going to think they're on the ticket. You're going to see so much. The U.S. Constitution yeah. prescribes uh, 35 years of age as the minimum age for president. Matter of fact, you have to be above 35. Well, so some people Marco, pro some people project gravitas and others don't. I mean, I, you need to be you need to have age to have gravitas. It's that it doesn't have. I said doesn't have to do strictly with years. Is he, that a prescription he, of the Constitution? He, uh, the Romney has other gravitas. choices oh, that bolster his his uh, brand, which is I'm the fix it guy on the economy. Romney um, Rubio offers something else, and I don't think that's what he's looking for on the ticket. Out of time. Bye-bye. Why are you still sleeping? I just wanted to check and make sure that we were on schedule. The first technology of its kind. Mom and Dad, I have great news. Is now providing answers families need. Siemens answers.